How would you define a Ruth Goldberg invention? Well, uh, I've been called the father of automation. Uh, uh, it's one thing after another. I mean, that's really the thing. And uh, it's, a, it's, a logic, it's an illogical bunch of things which are put in a logical sequence. Rube Goldberg. 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 I made a Rube Goldberg machine. A Rube Goldberg machine. It's an intentionally delightful waste of time and energy. Here's a typical example of what I mean. Ten to twenty failures and two successes. So that's that's my hypothesis. The internet, and YouTube in particular, has given a whole new life to Rube Goldberg. Watch close. How does this work? It's just very simple. Oh, and there it goes. There are one or two among you who think that my uh, inventions are a bit ahead of their time. All right, go on and say it. Downright screwy. Rube Goldberg doing something simple in a very complicated way that is not necessary. It's a goofy, gadgety, glorious sight to behold. This, this goes up a bit of a Rube Goldberg contraption. Sloppy staff work right from the beginning, especially on this bill. And this is the world's slowest Rube Goldberg.
I uh, build Rube Goldberg machines. Oh, no kidding. I love it. You actually know what it is. I'm pretty surprised. Absolutely. <laughs> from this earthly scene. This machine of mine will be working on and on and on and on and on. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, a, the uh, another episode. I don't know. I was going to say the final or whatever. It's not the final uh, of the Nasa Rube Goldberg Minecraft Challenges. I'm Mike Watcher, and that's Steve Isaac over there, Eric Leitner, and Jennifer George all with us, as always. Um, welcome to everybody in the chat. Lots of people chatting already. It's an exciting time. Um, we are we've been having such a good time watching all of the really wild creations that you guys have been making um you know it, it's funny we we keep we talk every every time before the show starts about what to show and stuff like that and it's i've got like eight six videos queued up to show people um before we do before we dive into that stuff though maybe um we'll get steve to, to give us a bit of a, a recap on what we've been doing, why we've been doing it, and kind of how people can get involved if you're here for the first time learning all about this. I would love to. Um, so, you know, so a while back, um, you know, I've been uh, using Rube Goldberg machines in my classes with uh, Fortnite Creative and Minecraft for a while, and I often tweet them out and... Um, I guess got the attention of, of Jennifer and the Rube Goldberg team and uh, they reached out and wanted to do something pretty grand in terms of uh, a digital Rube Goldberg machine contest. So we got to talking and um, uh, Nasef and Eric got involved and we, we, we um, asked Mike and, and uh, participate to, to support the efforts and, and host the streams and, and all that great stuff. And, and here we are. And it started with an idea of um, of building some knowledge uh, around simple machines and having kids create uh, prototypes of simple machines in Minecraft, uh, which would lead to our culminating event, which will be a huge digital uh, Rube Goldberg build-a-thon to coincide with the uh, physical Rube Goldberg challenge, which has been going on for how many years, Jennifer? 33. 33 years. So... Now, this is the first annual um, digital Rube Goldberg machine contest, and we're super excited. And if you've been watching, you've seen some amazing things that people who are participating um, did to demonstrate simple machines in Minecraft. Um, if you haven't joined us yet, the website, nasef.org slash learning slash Rube Goldberg, hopefully somebody will pop that in the chat. This is where you get started. And you could still register a team. We still have one mini challenge left that we're going to announce today. And then the 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 huge uh, 
Minecraft uh, Rube Goldberg Challenge, which is going to start in January, um, which you'll also be able to participate in as a team. And that is a global challenge um, for teams that need Minecraft Education Edition accounts. We can get them. Um, you don't have to use Education Edition, but that's um, something that we can help provide. Um, and basically, on the website, you'll see the link to register your team. Very simple. Brings you to a form uh, that just asks you to log in and register. Um, it, it's a simple process. Takes an adult uh, to be your team advisor unless you have somebody 18 or older on your team. There's a team guide which tells you absolutely everything you need to know. And for those educators out there, um, we've aligned everything with, with our ISTE standards and um, uh, the national science standards as well. So uh, we got all bases covered here. And for your entertainment, um, well, we have some of the pre-season challenges there, but also we have all of our live streams um, that you could watch and re-watch and re-watch again and Look at that. all that stuff. Wow. So we got a lot going on here, and um, we're so thrilled that so many people have been participating and registering and all. Um, I do want to to kind of cheat the the program here and show one video before we move on because um, one of our um, – one of the, the students uh, that's been very involved in what we've been doing is Namia, who's I think in the chat. And she, um, you'll be happy to know just recently, uh, and actually I'm gonna stop sharing and make sure I have the sound. Sorry, give me one second if you could, my apologies. Just wanna make sure we do this justice. Um, if it makes you feel better, the jacket is already loud. The jacket is loud, right? So yeah, we don't so. need any other, other loud. <laughs> anything um let's see so i'll share audio go back here and go back to youtube there we go okay so um so namia was in a science fair type of uh uh, uh, uh contest in her in her area and i do believe she came in first place um with her rube goldberg machine called sustainable world equals better world so let me show that and then we'll proceed So super cool. That is super cool. And um, that is a full on Rube Goldberg machine, which I think uh, we will see a lot of amazing things like that in the, the big competition that starts in January. But there's also going to be a theme for that. So Namia will have to um, incorporate that theme to finish off this project if this is what Or just do submit. another one. Or do another one. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to do more anyway, right? <laughs> Right, sure. So, uh, so last time we were together, we did um, an episode on wheels and axles, 
um and and uh, i assume i don't see the responses that's that's steve and i think eric's department um how how many how many responses did we get how many how many submissions uh does anyone do you have that number yeah. off the top of your head I believe it was 62 does that sound wow. right eric yeah for this one for our our last you know that this wheel and axle one it was 62 that's wild um, yeah so we have a few to share uh to show um, so I'm gonna share my screen this time, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some of these uh, some of these ones that uh, that we've kind of picked out to to highlight here. Uh, hopefully this all works. Let's take a look. Huh. Yeah, I thought this one was great because they actually. Uh... You know, th this is something we actually do field trips to these places that do the indoor skydiving so they mm. can learn physics. A and here it is in Minecraft. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, that's and, funny. And, yeah. And this one's actually functional, which is pretty great, too. That's oh, poor pigs. Yep. Loved that one. <laughs> oh, and this is also, the, they could call it the when pigs fly. Ah. Uh, uh, you're on fire with the dad jokes today. <laughs> <laughs> so this one took the build that we did last time uh, that we modeled and applied it. Uh, so in this case, why not? I mean, I had to share, you know, Marble Buff. Why not the Avengers Helicarrier? Oh, wow. Uh, right. So the turbines, uh, same concept. In this case, I think they used armor stands with swords uh, and brought those into that, you know, uh, spinning command mechanism that we kind of showed off. Uh, and that, of course, uh, you know, one of our participants made an amazing video that we shared last time, uh, but it worked. Also, I guess they were showing it in mirror mode because that's hard to read. Whoa, yeah. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the text is upside down or backwards. Yeah, yeah it's mirroring the screen, I guess, right? And we'll see another example of this uh, in a bit also, right? Where, um, you know, they use things like uh, clone commands and things like that to, to get like the appearance and illusion. And we actually just saw uh, the windmills sort of turning. Um, so we'll see some of that in action in a little bit. But I thought this was really cool. Just taking that thing that we did and actually putting it somewhere in the build. And we'll see another one in a second. Neat. The next one was actually the more obvious one to me. Where it was like, you know how many times we have built buildings and didn't think about this? Obvious, right? So that's uh, glow rods or, or um, end, end rods mm. and end rods and tridents. Yeah, and you've got a functional ceiling fan. That's awesome. That's kind of neat. Yeah, I think about all the, like, the house builds that we've done, and I was like, God, why didn't we yeah. do that? And I like, I like the fact that, like you said before with the last one, they're taking the idea but now they're actually saying well you know just having the wheel and axle on the ground with the spinny thing doesn't really do much but let's let's find the use for it exactly and then of course you know we have some that come with post-production values that are just amazing so i had to share one uh again they used vanilla minecraft you know components and everything but they've got a nice filter on it and it just kind of makes it really nice like it's just great production Shaders. You know, and I think there were some questions um, regarding whether or not post production for the video submission was allowed, and, and we never said that it wasn't. Mods in the game specifically were not allowed. And, and yes, in the chat we're hearing, yeah, those are command blocks. They're they're using commands that will you know uh, remove and clone um, certain builds, and that's what they were showing over the other side were the two builds that were being cloned. Um, to make it look like the uh, windmill is spinning. Awesome. Right, because again, one of the things we keep stressing in these builds is it's, uh, especially for these pre-challenges, it's representation, right? We know not everything can be done perfectly here. So, but this is functional with pistons. Neat. Oh, and you can see it. 
Yep. Yeah, no, another team did one similar to this. And look at the fireworks each time. But one yeah. where what they did was it was cool. They put a wool block in there at 1.2 to show so you could see it moving. But this one you could tell is moving anyway. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, if you had one that was a different color, I guess you could watch it and follow it very carefully. Yeah. So pretty cool. That mm -hmm. was, I think, all of those. Did we want to show... Uh, okay, so we've shown um, that other video. Did we want to get into uh, the talking about levers then, Eric? I think I think that's usually what's next. That is usually what's next. And, uh, you know, this is, well, well, you say next, but this is the last one, right? This is officially our last one to share. Uh, we've gone through our simple machines after this one. So I will, I will relish this one last slide deck. Uh, so we are going to talk about levers today. Um, obviously, one of the things uh, for our Minecraft users uh, that has been a challenge through all of these is saying things like, this doesn't exist in Minecraft. Well, levers actually literally by name exist in Minecraft. <laughs> but, uh, if we're going to build something extravagant, of course, using the lever that exists is great. Uh, and using those levers to do something is great. Uh, but what else can we do? Right. We saw using redstone and things coming up in the chat or commands in the chat. So we'll take a look. So let's take a look at the slide deck and actually learn something about how levers, what they are and how they work. So really basic, we'll start. Uh, levers are used to help lift heavy objects, right? So um, anyone who has ever been on a playground with playground equipment might recognize this. Uh, I would call it a seesaw. I was told that that is for people in the UK and people in the Northeast of the United States and that other parts of the United States would call this a teeter-totter. Teeter-totter, yep. I don't know why that was a new one to me. I was like, teeter-totter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all right, we'll go with both of those, seesaw and or teeter-totter. Uh, but if you've been on one, you know that like when one side goes down, the other goes up. And that can be used to lift heavier objects. Because even if you have two people who aren't the exact same weight on there, uh, the lighter person is very often, depending on you know the amount of differential, to still get that other person up in the air. Uh, there is a video in here, and of course, we'll embed this in our Flipgrid, so we're not going to watch that one right now. Uh, but again, it's a simple machine that is used to change the direction of force needed to move an object over a fulcrum. Uh, and the fulcrum is the pivot point. So in that previous one of the, of the teeter-totter slash seesaw, the center, the pivot point, uh, where the hinge is, if you will, uh, is the fulcrum. That is the point in which it is rotating around. And that is different on all sorts of types of levers, as we're going to see. Uh, the different kinds of levers depend on where the fulcrum is located. Uh, so we'll take a look at those different ones and see what happens if we put the fulcrum all the way at the end compared to dead center or somewhere in between. Right, so we've got uh, a beam and we've got a fulcrum and that fulcrum pivots or the beam rather pivots on or around the fulcrum. And in this case, we're looking at one that's just using basically like a triangle and we've got that seesaw sort of effect. So how it works, uh, the beam spreads the weight of the object across that distance. The longer the distance, of course, uh, means we're spreading it out even further. So if we look at this setup, right, we've got our heavy load here, something heavy to lift. If we move that fulcrum to the right, we've got a greater length of that beam on this side, a greater range of motion in this case between the beam and the ground, uh, meaning that this, while it's going to be a longer distance to move that beam, we're spreading it out, uh, less force overall is going to be, uh, or actually we're spreading that force out. So let, less force at any one point is going to be needed to lift that heavy object. So let's throw this in the chat real quick. Uh, what are some examples of levers you might see in your daily lives? And yes, we know seesaw and teeter-totter, but you know what? I'm also curious which one you call it. So feel free to throw it in there. But what are some examples of levers that you might have, might see? Throw them in the chat. Um, I, the, we talked about this as we were starting the arm of a slot machine. Yes, the arm of a slot machine. For those of you 18 and older, the arm <laughs> of a slot machine. Uh, a light switch. Yeah, that's a good one. A light switch. Um, Lever. Light switch is a good one. Uh, That's it. I feel like this group is smarter than they can. They can throw us some more, but we'll take a look at the next slide and see what we've got. For a, for a tire, we had a flat tire this weekend. Ah. 
Right. So some jacks, right? Like a hydraulic jack that you actually pump the handle up and down would be an example of a lever. Scissors is a great example uh, and a unique huh. example in this case, right? Like shears, scissors, things like that, even like uh, pliers, uh, because it's actually a pair of levers working together. I thought, right? so I, here, I thought it was a wedge. I don't know. Some. Well, the blade is a wedge, right? We yeah. learned that when we did our wedge one, the blade is definitely a wedge, but the motion of these and the action in which you're pro, uh, you know, using that force, uh, so this is a lever with a fulcrum and this is a lever with a fulcrum. And then of course those lever arms, the, the, you know, the um, beams have blades on them. So yeah, this is a kind of a combination of a few simple machines in the case, right? Catapult is a great example. Um, many people don't realize, uh, think about something like a wheelbarrow. And we're going to talk about that one in a little bit. Fishing rod is a great example because it's a somewhat unique one. Uh, and it's an example of one of the types of levers. Pian you know what? The keys on a piano, yeah, are levers. Or even the, the way the hammers uh, move or strike, they are levers. They're in there. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Right? So uh, if we use this hammer, for example, our hand where we grasp this and rotate it with our wrist becomes the fulcrum, right? We grasp it here and it rotates around this point. The wheelbarrow, when we lift it, right? The fulcrum is actually all the way at the end down <laughs> here, right? We're pivoting around this point, uh, that little wheel and axle, of course, in this case. Uh, but this is a lever and this is a lever attached to a wheel and axle. Hmm. Uh, so levers are used, of course, when objects are too heavy to pick up by hand. Uh, using a lever allows you to change the direction you apply force to and move an object over a pivot point. Oh, went too far. Let's go back. There we go. So here's an example uh, in that photo on the right of someone lifting a heavy load. And notice, of course, the fulcrum much closer to the load than it is to uh, the force being applied to the lever or what we'd call the effort. Um, so as notice because of that, this beam is much higher right now, and there's a large range of motion here and a somewhat smaller range of motion here. So does this explain how the pyramids are built? Yes, yeah, uh, really. Yeah, they, 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 they've <laughs> definitely historically <laughs> talked about <laughs> using these kinds of tools, right? So often, you know, and I'm going to keep going, but you hear those things like, oh, aliens must have done it because how do they did it? But simple machines can make that happen. Aliens using simple machines. <laughs> aliens mm -hmm. using simple mm -hmm. machines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, just because we don't understand it doesn't mean the answer is always aliens, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> I like. You're gonna, you're gonna make it hard for me to, to go on this course. We got like alien emojis popping up in the. <laughs> you're like the, uh, you're like the Star Wars guy. The answer is always aliens. Always aliens. Mm. Yes, I don't have enough wacky hair to say that though. So you know. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the types of levers: first class, second class, and third class levers. Uh, and on the right, you'll see example, but rather spend the time on this. We're simply going to say that where the fulcrum is located and how the effort is applied and where the effort is applied determines what type of lever it is. And rather than spend time trying to explain these diagrams and so on, we're going to look at examples. Right. So here's first class. This is literally our seesaw slash teeter totter. Uh, right. Uh, the fulcrum, fulcrum is generally in between the load and the effort as this person pushes down. Even though that load is putting weight on it, this end would go up uh, and then vice versa, of course. So very simple. One end goes down, the other goes up. Um, and the load is on one end and the force is on the other end. Okay. Here is that second type. And again, we were talking about that wheelbarrow. And in this case, the fulcrum is all the way at the end. So that would be right here. This is where the wheel would be. This is where it's pivoting. The load is in the center, right? We're putting our gravel, our rocks, whatever, inside here. Um, manure came up in that video you showed, Steve, so that could go in the wheelbarrow. Uh, and then we lift, so the effort is going up uh, to lift the load in the wheelbarrow and move it easier. Ooh, an engine throttle is a really good example. Uh, and then finally, and this is one that came up in the chat, uh, as a fishing rod, is a, an example of a third class lever where we're actually, the load is on the end, right? So this would be where our fish is pulling down on the line, which is pulling down on the end of that beam. 
uh, the effort is actually more closely to the center, right? We hold the fishing rod here, but we're pivoting around a point at the end of the rod, right? If you think about the motion you pull on that fishing rod with, the pivot point is actually all the way at the far end of the rod. So we're pulling towards the center uh, around a pivot point that's at the far end uh, below where we're doing it. So that's a you know a unique one we don't always think of as a lever, but 100% it's a lever. So that was a really good example. All right, so I think it is now officially time to try it. We're gonna make some levers. We're gonna make some levers. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe, right? We'll, we'll play around and see what we can get, I suppose. Oh boy. Uh, let's... Teeter totter. Teeter totter. We're gonna build. You know what? That is exactly what I'm going to build a teeter totter. Um, however, uh, one of the I things I want to. Oh, there it is. You sure do. Uh, so this is something that came up. It should disappear right about now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing before we go on, right? We still have our wheel, and that's where we left off last, last time. A uh, lot of you put in uh, submitted wheel builds and used command blocks, and they were awesome. One thing we want to um, <laughs> make sure that we are uh, sharing with you, because we got a lot of these, is a lot of you probably... Um, started your wheel up with your command blocks and then saw this on your screen, right? Tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. And tried. <laughs> Just madness that never stopped. And it was a little hard uh, to share your screen or to share your what you wanted to share with us with your camera uh, because you've got this thing taking up, you know, a quarter of the screen or more. Uh, so there actually is a command uh, that will get rid of that so it's not hogging up your screen. So I've actually made two command blocks over here uh, that have the command in it. And actually you can use the chat, the text line to put this command in with a slash command, or you can do it like I did with a command output uh, block output in a command block. Uh, but if we click on this, right, we'll see that the command is game rule command block output false. And of course, if we wanted to change it back, it would be game rule command block output true. In this case, I've made it impulse and needs redstone. I threw a button on each one. So now if I press the true button, you see what we're seeing right now. The commands are on, or at least seeing the commands are on. Uh, and if we press false, you'll see at the bottom there, it says game rule command block output has been updated to false. And if you give it a second, all of that text will vanish off the screen and it's gone. It's still running those commands. It's just not displaying the output on our screen. Uh, so obviously when you do the final build challenge, you don't want that all over your screen. The other option, of course, and I'm gonna put it back to true real quick, and this is easy, uh, is if you press F1 on your keyboard, it takes away all of the heads up display, including that text, and now you've got a complete camera mode. Uh, so this is a really great way, of course, to share everything as well. Uh, so there you go. I'm going to bring it back, though, and turn off all of those commands so they don't drive us crazy all day. And they should be gone. This has uh, turned into quite the place now with all the stuff going on. It mm -hmm. has. And I forgot when we were doing the pulleys that we, we kind of strung up those animals under there. <laughs> <laughs> Where did our... Um... Didn't we have a screw? <coughs> uh, we down? did. Where did it go? I don't know. That was the one, that was the one call oh, I right. wasn't on. So I wonder. No, we we did a we like walked. We had a. Huh. You're right. We had it go down a corkscrew like. The, oh, the rail, I know but... what's going on because we did it in someone else's world. Oh, and then, oh yeah. And there that you is go. the call that Eric wasn't on. So Eric oh, is right. Making... It's not on. It's not on my version here. Yeah. yeah, it was right here, and it came down from here. Mm. Yep. So I, I've dropped down to the lower level. I'm going to build the quote unquote seesaw and or teeter totter to the the best of my ability. Uh, so I'm going to grab the materials I need. Uh, we'll start with a visual representation, and then we'll see mm. if we can make it actually work. Uh, so let's grab some blocks. Let's let's grab a gate. I find the gate actually works to look pretty good. I need a button. Again, uh, you know, Mike, I, I always default to you make things look pretty. So I keep trying to make things look pretty. 
Uh, I, I don't know if I'm doing a good job of it, but I try. People should come check out the Capitol building. Oh, my I'm goodness. Making. Maybe we have to show yeah, that. See, today, that, right? that is gorgeous, right? So that's a whole other level of pretty. Why don't I, don't we, I, yeah. I don't know if I have a picture of that somewhere. You must. I have a Here, Twitter, let me, let I have Twitter pictures. I'm going to switch to Eric's screen. Sure. Well, I... All right, so we're going to use this as our fulcrum right here. Uh, well, actually, the post holding up our fulcrum. This will be our fulcrum, and we may as well add a button here to make it look like a hinge, even though these buttons won't be functional. Um, fun fact. Hi, Cal. Uh, fun fact. Um, if you're using gates, uh, or fence, rather, you can actually stick fence onto pretty much anywhere, and most of our Minecraft players know that. Uh, but if you wanted to use gates the same way, they don't. You can't use a gate and build it off the ground unless you put something underneath it and then break it first. So I could put block here, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, because this will make like for a really much better looking beam, I think. So we could put, oh, I don't want to open the gate. That, stop it. There we go. We could put one, two, three there, one, two, three there, and then break these, and there we go. So we already have sort of <laughs> um, this uh, lever, right? Where if we, you know, put, if we could imagine pushing down on this side, this side would go up and vice versa. Uh, obviously things don't really turn or most things here don't really turn on a 45 degree angle. So we're, we're gonna see if we can make this kind of functional. I've been <laughs> thinking about it. Like how can we make this kind of functional? Um, I, I've seen some videos of how people do it, but unfortunately some of the ways they showed only work in like pocket edition and, and those don't even work anymore because old tricks, you know, they, they, they phase out with new versions. I've seen that over and over again. So let's see what we can make work. Um, let's try this with some sticky pistons. Oh, it's for me. I'm just kidding. I don't know whose phone that was. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm sure it's more important than anything I would get then. We're just going to. That should work. Let's put maybe one of these guys up here and one of these guys up here. Um, yeah, that's so far so good. All right, so we want to make this actually work work, though, right? So let's fill in these holes because I'm going to need this land. And I figure let's use uh, some rail with a detector so it goes back and forth and sets off whatever events we want to make happen here, if that makes sense. So let's grab some rail. Let's grab powered rail. Let's grab a detector. Let's grab some redstone. Let's grab some redstone dust. Uh, and let's see what we can do. So if we put, let's see, how about the detector here for this one and the detector here for this one? Uh, we're going to need some power, so we'll put a redstone. This should be far enough. This should be far enough. Maybe not. And we want this thing to bounce. So let's put that there and that there. Okay, and we're going to do some powered rail all the way across this thing. The donkey has shown up now. Why is it the animals? I just want to check out what we're doing. Uh, let's throw some redstone there and some redstone there. Uh, so if we get a cart, let's see how, let's see our progress here. If we get a cart, mine cart. And we throw that thing on here and we give it a push. All right, so we've got something, right? It's going up on one side, then the other side, and the other side. Sort of a teeter totter effect. Nice. I mean, it's something, right? It's a start. Now they, you've got me saying teeter totter, by the way. Mm, perfect. <laughs> Look, it looks like it looks very teeter totter esque. It's it's teeter tottering, uh, but I mean I guess it's not a teeter totter it's actually, unless it's actually teetering and tottering. Is it? It's doing both, right? Is it yeah. seeing and sawing as well? Or <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Uh, oh, 
So obviously there is, and most of you know the players know this, there is actually a lever, quote now, unquote, in the game. Now I'm thinking you put like a, a cool like armor stand that's doing something on there and it'll look like people are teetering and tottering. You know what? That wasn't even my thought, but that's not a bad idea because my thought was what if we can make it so that we can ride it, you know? Oh, that too. Well, we, like, so yeah. you and I can sit in it and, and Mike can film us and point and laugh. Yeah. Right. And I like this model of one kind of, this is one going up. Here, let me up, go to it. Right. Or unless it's going down, if I go on the other side sort of thing. Oh, I just spawned in someone's head or vice versa. No, oh, I, I did okay. that. I'm sorry. I wanted to no, teeter no, and totter. All right. Let's so see, I, I figure let's put mine carts on this thing and then we can sit in it. Oh, I see. Got it. Uh, to do that, though, we are going to use levers because we need this thing to stop moving. Because if you've ever tried to put mine, rail, or stuff on here while it's moving, everything breaks. I just so break this rail cart. Turn right these. I'm going to turn these both off with levers. Okay. Yep, and go ahead and throw another rail in mine cart on that one if you got one. I can get one. Uh, well. I think he's going to be... Oh, he just beat you to it. Uh, who did, Mike? Yeah. Mike always beats me. Okay, I'm in. I'm in one though. All right, I'm gonna throw this one down, and now we've got this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and get that one. Oh, now that's and... fun. Yeah, it's fun. I'm having fun. Oh, there you now, go. I, now, we got Mike's that, camera angle. Now perfect. that looks like a seesaw. Yeah, it does. When, and when it... you when you have the people <laughs> in it, it actually yeah yeah the, yeah the the, the visual kind of the visual definitely a little bit. We we are yeah. teetering and tottering. You're teetering and now. I'm teetering. I don't know. I think I'm seeing and you're sawing. <laughs> Sorry, you know, originally from the Northeast. But where, uh, what I don't understand is where is the fulcrum in this? Because I, I see you got you have it as a stanchion in the middle, but right. there isn't like a plank or anything that's hanging. Right. Right. So we, we got to go with representation on yeah, this. Because, yeah. you know, with the exception of the lever handle, there aren't a whole lot of fulcrums to be had in right. Minecraft. Got it. Yeah, because if, so you, know if you look at that center of that build... You'll okay. see I kind of put a button to represent like the hinge. Right. The difference is, of course, the beam isn't moving. If we could get the right. beam moving, right. this would look really more seesaw yeah. teeter tottery. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have to brainstorm that one. But well, that's metal, a tough so, call. You know, you know what you would do there, I think, is you could just use command blocks to yeah. like there you go. hide and then move. But, and... Or just uh, actually clone and right and, yeah. and paste them in where they, you want them to go. Yeah. Or you might I have mean, to uh, teleport then the, the players uh, if they're in it. So that they go with it. All that stuff, but that yes, we, we leave that to the children. The did smart. By the way, just jump into the random cart. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. The donkey is totally, has totally <laughs> into the cart. But my grandfather would have loved this cart. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh, there you go. I didn't even see you. who added the donkey. No. Or did uh, he just jump in there? Oh, that he was just, your that was your random donkey then. He just decided to go for a ride. He puts decided his head to join us. He could be okay. a flower. <laughs> I appreciate the happy birthday. Mike and Steve is still in the background yes, of this. Yes. Now, now, interestingly, Jennifer, and you'll like this, when um, kids start creating, I'm sure they're big projects, one of the neat tricks a lot of my students use, which um, I'm sure your grandfather would appreciate too, is that a, um, a zombie... Is it the zombie chases the villager or the villager chases the zombie? No, the you were zombie, right the first time. The right. zombie chases the villager. Zombies yeah. chase villagers. So if you set it up so that you have a a villager and a zombie and the villager, it'll force the villager to walk because it's being chased by the zombie. And then that often helps with the next chain reaction. So then you get it. So the villager then steps on a pressure plate or something to activate the next chain in the, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the, chain of commands and that and it uh provides a neat effect is that a real action or is it random it, no it's it happen. It, it it definitely happens like in other words if you have them like the if you have let's say you um summon which you could do with a command a zombie and a villager with the villager in front of the zombie the zombie will just literally follow behind the villager and the villager will will run away from the zombie straight straight away so it, it like it it doesn't um there's no no worry of it not working out the way you're trying to have it go in a you know in a chain right um so no that's a good question uh someone said where did the minecraft rails go that we put on the blocks that were on top of the sticky pistons and actually uh as steve got up there and everything went to chaos uh the piston actually breaks them 
Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and to be honest, those carts are not really set there, as you can tell. It's they're getting pushed right. up and they're falling down. They're getting pushed up and they're falling down. But if we were to walk into them, they would definitely like move around and bump out of position and things like that. Um, so it's a little tricky. And to be honest, I tried this with other materials. You know, I tried throwing a slime block or a honey block there to get things to stick together, and it just it, it wasn't playing nice. Uh, so we needed something that was affected by gravity up there. Hmm. And of course, the bonus of the minecart is that you can actually get in. Yeah, that's why I wonder if the oh look at now it looks like there's no cart there, or is is there no, no it's, cart anymore? It's, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, I I clicked it and got rid of it. Oh, that wasn't very nice. Or, or no, no, he's you, messing with you. Oh, you're trying to. But what about that's where it brings me back to the idea of the armor stand. Would the armor stand? How See, would right, that be affected? Why, well, it's a good question, uh, and we can test it. But. Um, you know, Mike was, if you just saw what Mike was trying to do on his screen, he was trying to put the rail and the cart mm -hmm. back. And that's actually why I added the levers, because it's much easier to do if you stop the thing first. Mm. If you're trying to do it while it's moving, you got to be quick. So let's see, you got an armor stand up there. Let's turn it back mm -hmm. on. Okay. Oh, he's working. We mm -hmm. could dress him up, yeah. yeah and we yeah. could face them towards each other if we wanted to also. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's lose this cart. Let's go with. Uh, oh, I just moved the block. Totally not what I wanted to do. Oh, let's just grab another one. There we go. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. He just gets he just gets a hat and shoes, nothing else. He's just, you know, well, that's what that, I had that in my inventory for some reason. So <laughs> here we'll give him a we'll give him a yellow chest plate. He doesn't need all diamond. Oh, no, wait. No, no, no. There we go. And then, gosh, that's cool. All right, very cool. Very cool. Let's break it and see what happens when we build it on purpose by mistake. Oh, Katrina's watching. Thank you. That, that is a very, very specific yet complex set of instructions. Um, and I feel like actually that describes Minecraft as a whole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of our MO around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. They got a little bit of a jump to them, right? But you know what? Uh, as a kid, I remember going on a seesaw, and I remember specifically my brother yeah. trying to launch me but now into I'm, the air. So I'm pretty this is, sure. This is, you know, I'm, relatable. I'm pretty sure our parents told us, do not stand on the teeter-totter. That's not what they told me. I'm sorry. They said, don't stand on the seesaw. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, the, the very. W w this is one of those where we have to um, put in a disclaimer. Don't try this at home. Right. Eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. I mean, you know. I mean, we will try. Everybody will try it at home. But as a science teacher, you know, my, you know, in parts of my existence, it's hard to not tell people to experiment. But you know, mm -hmm. use the proper precautions when experimenting. Yes, like put on diamond armor. Right. If like, you have diamond armor <laughs> home, put that on first. Yeah, wear your and... diamond armor before getting on the teeter totter, guys. <laughs> oh, and also hydrate. Apparently, just showed up. Oh, in the chat. hydrate. That's another I, thing I that's important hydrate. to do if you're going to do outdoors experiments. You're right. You're right. I literally just finished my water bottle. It's empty. <laughs> I've got coffee. Got does it. that count? Um, it does, but I don't know that it really is effective. We're not on camera, so I can just I say should, I should mention, speaking of hydrate, that if you're not following the channel, um, you know, you should you should click on that um, cool little heart icon um, on your screen. I don't actually know where it is. If you're watching on participate.com slash live. I actually don't know where the follow button is. I'm not sure there is. You might have to click on like our name and then it'll take you to Twitch. And then um, down at the underneath the view screen, you can click follow and you should do that. You because should. You should do that. You should. We, uh, we will uh, be continuing to do the Rube Goldberg streams. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a break for the next uh, little bit here. Um, and then, uh, I guess what's next? We're coming so, back January, January, 6th. Right? January 6th is a big day. I'll say it now and I'll say it again later, but January 6th is when we're going to announce the actual theme that you're going to have to adhere to as you build a full on Rube Goldberg machine. So we'll talk a little bit more on January 6th about the whole idea of, um, 
of what uh, uh, an entire Rube Goldberg machine would involve. So in these challenges, we have tried to string some of ours together, but um, it's been mostly about learning about the simple machines because Rube Goldberg machines are in fact comprised of a number of simple machines. But in the end, it's a complex machine that um, achieves a simple task based on the chain reactions. And that's where it's going to get very interesting. And there will be a task that you are tasked with completing at the end. And that's what we're going to announce January 6th. So, I mean, gosh, if you follow the channel, you'll get this nifty notification right when we go live January 6th. So I wouldn't want to miss that. And we do other things too. So you'll wanna mm -hmm. you'll wanna watch some of the other content we we create on here. If you wanna learn to code, we got you. If you wanna learn how to Minecraft, we got you. If you wanna learn how to Fortnite, we got you there too. <laughs> so we, we uh, got you, we got you covered. If you wanna build a Rube Goldberg machine in the real world, yeah, uh, you can actually go to rubegoldberg.com and uh, put a team together and build a real life Rube Goldberg machine um, that shakes and pours a box of nerds mm. now how cool would it be if people like kind of tried to emulate the same like some people join both competitions and do the physical one and the minecraft one mm -hmm. and that see what happens yeah, yeah i think it'll happen Gen jennifer let me ask you a question since we have so many students uh, and teachers for that matter working remotely right now all over the place um, is there the potential for forming a team amongst your family and doing that challenge, like, you know, in your kitchen? Absolutely. We have a family division in the live competition. Uh, we also have our normal divisions, hmm. which are uh, based on age. Um, and so you can put together a group of siblings, uh, friends who are kind of sequestered together in the same neighborhood or apartment building. Hmm. Uh, or it could be a family-centric uh, build, um, any of the above. And then I believe there are still some free registrations left um, at rubegalberg.com. So check it out. And, and that brings up a good point, too, about the digital, because we've been sort of um, following suit in that we have a junior division, a like a, like 8- to 12-year-old teams, a, a next division, which is 13 and up. And then we have a family division as well and love seeing families get into this together. So um, there is really an opportunity for anybody who wants to get involved. Mm -hmm. We uh, should announce the winners from last week's competition. We should. Uh, there we there should. are. Uh, but only oh. because someone asked in the chat. <laughs> oh, did someone? I, 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 it's my job. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the, I'm here for the chat. <laughs> I'm here for the chat. All right. So, Eric, so, do you yeah. want to do the honors? Uh, I don't know. I, I I've talked a bunch today. I kind of want to give it back to you and, and just. Oh boy! Sli okay. Unless that was a, I don't want to do it. You know. No, you can... no. He wasn't ready for this. <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm. Re I was. Are ready. we? Are we announcing? He is always this, ready. This so, the winners of this one. January 6th? That's no. right. So yes. yes, yes, yes. Good point. So to, right now, we're going to announce the winners of the... Um, wheel and Axle. The Wheel and Axle. And and next, and January 6th, which means you have a little bit of time. I mean, I don't know when our cutoff is, but the Lever winners will be announced on January 6th. Um, and these winners, just to, be, to let you know how this goes, is that we look at all of the entries, and as long as yours qualifies as adhering to the theme, in this case, the wheel and axle, you are entered to win because the prizes are random from that point. So let me um, announce, and if you're in the chat, let's see you hoot and holler if you hear yourself or a friend or something win. But we have um, Lashim from the Stardust Miners. We have, yep, we have Margaret and the team of the Block Bashers. Nice name. Yeah, we have Dominique, um, and <laughs> we love their their name. Now it is it is Cool Gamers with a Z, but it is not Cool Gamers. It's actually it is actually Cool Gamers with a Z. Just like all that. spelled out. Yeah, all spelled all out. out. Perfect. Um, <laughs> then we have Raul, um, who must be playing some Among Us, as their team name is Imposter Id. And then we have Jovani with Team Roke. And there you have it. Any of the people here watching? 
it makes us happy when when we get some excited people in the chat that's awesome yeah very good well congratulations everyone what do they win tell them what they won eric i will happily tell them what they've won uh they are going to win a class set or a team set so it's actually 10 uh, HyperX Cloud headsets, which is the headset I'm actually wearing at this very moment. Now, this also does have a removable mic. I'm using my desktop mic, so I took it off. But if you're like, well, we're getting earphones with no mics, no, they've got really nice mics that attach to them. So it's very it's cool. the whole kit and caboodle. I want awesome. a pair of headphones like that. We need to get Jennifer a pair of headphones uh, like this. That's right. I, I, I think if you talk to Gerald, you, you, you know him. You know him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So that is awesome. Now, I believe we have a cool video to take us out. Is that right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're going to uh, and, we're going to watch a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah, yes. that, I have never seen this yet. Right. So I just I just do what I'm told. Right. <laughs> it's a great one. <laughs> All right. All right. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, we are taking a break for the holiday season. Um, but as you've heard, we will be back on January the 6th. We'll announce the winners of uh, this week's um, session on levers, levers, levers. levers. Talked about levers. levers, levers, seesaws, and and teeter totters, and teeter totters um, on January the sixth, and we will talk about uh, what is next. So please come and join us then. Again, follow uh, the Inside Participate channel if you're not following us already. Uh, so that you can uh, get a notification as soon as we go live. And with that, we'll sign off and see everybody uh, later. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you.